How's it going folks? Just out here at Laidley in southeast Queensland at the home of Michael and Save Your Soil Permaculture. Uh, it's a little bit of an urban farm he has on a house block here in the township of Laidley and it's where I ran a aquaponic workshop, the first one ever, um, last weekend. Uh, apparently it went over really well, uh, people learned a thing or two. So I thought I'd give you a bit of a look through the system that we built for Michael and we used um, bits and pieces of it as a bit of a demonstration for the day. So uh, please excuse the shaky camera, uh, no tripod and I'm still using the dodgy cannon so anyway enough excuses we'll get in and have a bit of a look at the system here so this is Michael's fish room um, it's just a little bit of a um, lean-to tacked on the back of a shed here it's pretty basic there is a few little things we still need to tidy up on this um, things like uh, this pipe work coming out of the fish tank itself there's a little bit skew width the first time the radial flow filter is cleaned and there's no water in it we'll just rearrange that I'm gonna pop out here when Michael does that um, we'll just fix it up but yeah, the setup is pretty basic. Um, I'll start here. This is where the water comes into the system. It's looking a bit murky at the moment because we're still adding clay. Michael put a couple of bags in this afternoon. Um, the water is coming in through this little DIY Venturi. Um, some of you may recognize it from the fish farm. It's pretty much all that one there I brought out and given to Michael. It's attached to some of this grey hose that he picked up at a local um, irrigation and uh, rural supply store. It's a um, Use normally for um, just moving water around a property uh, between water tanks and whatnot. But the guys there assured him that it is um, fish friendly, so that's all hunky dory. Just into uh, a um, nut and tail fitting and then screwed PVC fitting into that. Bit of a 316 stainless steel screw in there just holding this assembly all together. So, very basic venturi, and it is adding a fair bit of water, oh, sorry, air into the system. You can see it's probably going down around about, oh, I'd say about 8 inches or 20 centimetres into the water. Just up here on a shelf we have a backup air compressor. Um, uh, running full time it runs 750 litres an hour into the system. So really that venturi is not needed but um, you can never have too much oxygen in there. Um, the fish aren't going to complain whatsoever. This little jobby though runs 750 litres of an hour into the water um, for the fish but it also has two lithium ion batteries in there. So with this jobby you've got pretty much all around about 10 hours of um, backup battery time in it. The box says 40 but I'd pretty much will say no more than 10 hours. Uh, the, ideally the uh, power would be reconnected within an hour or two so your fish can then go back onto your normal um, aeration through your venturi or whatever. There are other backup designs. I've posted clips on them. They're on websites, little DIY jobbies. Enough of yeah, the setup out to the sump tank is pretty much all the same as on my other systems. Just a slow pipe. Um, down the bottom there, there's an end cap with holes in it at the moment. Um, mainly because Michael's going to be putting fingerlings in here. Um, and this little um, slow end put on the bottom um, basically would allow fingerlings, fingerlings to be sucked up and out into the um, uh, filter. So I've just got this, given Michael this one, and it can go on under a later date. He hasn't got any fingerlings in here yet. He wants uh, Jay Perch. To kickstart the system, I've given Michael some old crumble or one mil pellet. It's just up in a jar up in there. And what he can do is throw in a tablespoon a day or a bit under a tablespoon a day. And that'll add fish food to the system. That'll break down, release ammonia. Uh, then the bacteria can colonize the media in the grow beds, start to process the ammonia, and basically get your, they call it cycling, um, get your system cycled. So when he puts his um, 25 to 30 jade perch in here, he'll have no problems with high nitrite or ammonia levels um, and things will get off to a flying start. Uh, down here we've I've thrown a valve on there for him just because when you're cleaning your radial flow filter it takes a while for the water to um, decrease in your tank so I like to just turn the valve off there. It also means you can throw a hose back up um, in this line here without water going directly into your fish tank and it can flush that line out in there. Radial flow filter um, it's the same as any other radial flow filter. You've got a large drum and then you've got a bucket in the top um, that basically has the water coming through here. It redirects as it goes down around the edge of the bucket. The solids precipitate out and they deposit down on the bottom. Now the flow rate in this system, I forgot to mention, there's an 8,000 litre an hour pump. The flow is split, it's a split flow system. The flow is spl split with the majority coming through here into the fish tank. As you can see, there's a nice healthy flow coming in um, and then out through here to the radial flow filter. So while there's a fairly large volume of water coming through here, the retention time is actually pretty good. Um, when we clean the filter for the first time, we'll 
will time how long it takes to fill um, and that'll give us an overall retention time uh, litres per hour flowing through the fish tank um, I'll put a formula down in the description for you guys to see but yeah I think this jobby will do really well just on the base of the barrel here it's got the flange fitting very similar to what I showed you before um, Mr Paul's design by the way thanks mate a little 25 mil jobby so what it means is um, Michael can basically turn the tap off turn the pump off drain out as much water as he wants and then um, yeah collect all the solids from the base it'll go out via that hose outside into a bucket or straight onto his garden a bit of a garden out there so we, the solids aren't going to waste we discussed whether um, setting up a mineralization tank and all that sort of thing but yeah Michael's keen just to have it go straight out onto the veggie patch it will be used and it won't be going to waste so there you go there's a bit of a look in the fish room I'll just actually show you over the back here um, we have a little bit dark, sorry, but there's a uni seal on the other side here. 50 mil or 2 inch pressure pipe going outside, and we'll pick it up on the outside. And there's also a, ho a hole there for the hose coming in, and also the power lead for the pump that's in the sump. So, just on the other side of the wall here, we have a rubber cuff. Um, it's just a, a joining sleeve, it's um, held on with two hose clamps, and that's pretty much all taking the pipe flow down into the sump tank, just down through the back there. Now, um, Originally Michael and I talked about running uh, 45, uh, 90 degrees down, 90 degrees across, 90 degrees up and then in. Um, the problem I see with that design is there will be a lot of solids that do make it through the radial flow filter. They're not perfect. I've mentioned that before. There will be a solids accumulate down the bottom there. Now to rectify that what I'd have to do is put in a couple of barrel unions so that pipe can be taken out and flushed out and all the, you know, it, this is just a lot easier. It's running across at height. Also too, we're not worried about um, cutting off access because Michael would like to put a um, compost bay in here and it makes sense because just around here, past Michael's feet, is the garden and you know, as long as your compost is nice and close to the garden, it's a lot less work you have to do, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so compost bay will go there, it'll stop people running through there and kids trying to limbo under it and all that sort of thing. Um, I'll show you the pipework at the back here. Uh, there's a lot of wire across the back here which um, we were cursing to begin with but it, it does make a lot of sense especially if you have a lot of kids coming around the place um, it stops them getting in there and turning taps I just noticed that tap's not full we should turn that on just down here this is all the hose work that is feeding back to the fish tank and also to the grow beds um, it's looking a little bit um, messy at the moment probably some would think that I think it's all right um, some of these things just need to be zip tied up and tidied up a bit but you know that's easy enough to do basically we have the hose coming around from the pump there it's coming here the flow the main flow through the line um, basically the route of least resistance is going straight to the fish tank I do like using these hose because as you can see it does curve no sudden 90 degree corners like you get with the um, PVC pipe so it's just a little bit easier on the flow uh, all the fittings are held on with um, stainless steel clamps here uh, that just makes sure that um, basically they're not going to blow off and because they're stainless steel they're not going to rust when they get rained on so just again tracking the flow around from the pump um, out to the fish tank then we have a T coming up here with a tap that can turn it off it's a master valve as we do have a master valve for the fish tank too and then we have them going up to the grow beds every grow bed has one of these valves on it so we can adjust the flow into the grow bed I'll just show you up here and there's another one up here and um, likewise on the other end um, I'll just hop around the other side and show you how the water is going into the grow beds just up here we've got the valve as I showed you before and we've just got a couple of elbows um, just with a small section of that pipe and they're held in place with zip ties uh, Michael's um, situated this one a little bit further in from the corner because he'd like to have a nice little hanging effect over the side here with some sort of plant using the edges so it makes a lot more sense to have it over there um, nice and easy to get to the hand around the back to adjust the valve um, the system is set up on sleepers and besser bricks um, he's um, alternated the way the bricks are stacked and that pretty much will just make them nice and secure underneath here we have a couple of layers of um, what do they call them sleepers these sleepers are ACQ treated so they're not as bad as the other sleepers that you can get um, as you can see there the sleeper the um, sorry the best of bricks are interlocked just makes them nice and stable um, the beds themselves they're the side cut of the AB, uh, ABC IBC um, not the top and the bottom down the sides beside the valve gives you two nice flat bottom um, beds with no holes in them you've got to worry about 
And then we've just got the typical um, bell siphon set up. Um, you've seen the ones at my place. Uh, there's basically an end cap, the shroud goes in it, and then you have the bits and pieces, the workings of the bell siphon come up through there. Pretty easy, hunky-dory, 65mm um, pipe. I haven't glued these tops on. Um, I found that um, they're making a nice airtight seal. So I figured if I glued the tops on and we had problems with levels and I had to cut them, it would be a pain in the butt, but yeah, um, just pushing them on seems to make them airtight enough to initiate a siphon. Uh, we've got the three beds, as I mentioned before. Uh, this one here, um, slight design fault on my behalf, but we can rectify it in the future if Michael wants to. Um, basically, the return from this bed here is hanging down low into the sump. Um, just to give Michael probably about another, I'd say about another 50 to 80 litres, what we could do is just throw one of these sleepers underneath these beds, just bring it up about 50 mil, maybe a little bit higher, and what that will do is just allow him to have more water in the sump, mainly because you can't have water over that, um, that pipe there. It just will affect the way this bed siphons here. So just down in there, as you can see, um, the clay has been washed, but there's always a bit of particulate that is left over. A lot of that eventually will either settle on the base of the sump tank or on the base of the grow beds themselves. Um, there's the pump down in there. Um, again, stainless steel clamp around the hose, just keeping it on the pump. Um, if there's ever an issue with blowing solids out of this, very easy. That unscrews from that fitting there. Um, and then you, all you need to do is open and close different taps um, and move these guys out of the grow bed, of course. Put in the pressure hose and it just blows any solids out that accumulates in the lines. It's pretty much well what I do with mine. Um, if later on, if Michael has issues with trying to clean the lines out, all you need to do is just cut them, put in a couple of nut and tail fittings and that will pretty much will make it easier to disconnect in different areas. But we had to talk about it and at the time we were quite happy with just leaving it the way it is. Um, but it's always something you can come back and adapt later. Uh, the other question I was asked by a few people actually was what's in the bed. Uh, Michael opted for the clay. Uh, he went and looked at the local blue metal and like ours, the landscape supply is mixed in concrete with the blue metal. So it would be, you know, a three or four day job to go through and individually pick out all the concrete from the blue metal. So he opted for the clay. Also too, um, he does have a lot of um, people come through here and the clay will just be easier on the hands and on the children's hands and that sort of thing. So um, in that respect, it, it's going to be a lot easier to work with. But yeah, I have a feeling it may expand and he may change his mind later. We'll just wait and see. Uh, so yeah, I suppose that's pretty much all it. Um, are you happy with the way it's all gone, Michael? Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect for me. Perfect for you? Perfect for me. Cool. Um, he was mentioning before too, uh, because he's not getting any younger, um, <laughs> the, the height here, it's, it's up to roughly around about my hip. So what's that? Probably about just over three foot, over a meter off the ground. So it's very nice and easy to work from um, garden beds up this high. So there you go, folks. There's a bit of a look at um, the system, how it's running at the moment. Uh, Michael said I can pop out uh, along the way and we'll just might film a few little updates as fish go in the system and plants go in there and whatnot, um, just to give you a bit of a look, uh, a bit of a continual timeline on it. We'll wait and see. Uh, as for all those folks who came along to the workshop last weekend, thank you very much, guys. It was great meeting you all. Hopefully we'll get to see, um, get a bit of a look at your systems, how they come along in the future. Um, as for future workshops, I've had loads of people ask. Um, we didn't film anything at this one. Um, I might release a little bit of a, um, just a bit of a cheat sheet of local supplies and that sort of thing that I use. Basically what the people who attended the workshop are going to get, uh, just to help you folks out here in southeast Queensland. But as for system designs and um, doing future workshops, uh, that's all pretty much all up in the air at the moment. Uh, we'll visit that a little bit later. I might do something with Michael, we'll just wait and see yet. Um, the system itself though, a few teething problems. The height of the bed over the sump tank, that's a big one. I actually came out to put a bit of extra plumber's tape and an O-ring on a um, bulkhead fitting on one of the grow beds. But other than that, the system's ticking, ticking along fine. You've got no problems? No nope, problems at all. No problems at all so. Yeah, really looking forward to see some fish in there and also some plants. Um, I will actually be building another system very similar to this one um, out at my parents' place. And that one I will film stage by stage because I've had people ask if I can do something stage by stage. We'll just give them a bit of a timeline to follow and a few ideas on how they can put their own system together. Um, but anyway, I'll stop rabbiting on now. Uh, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, feel free to pop in the comments section below and I'll get back to you where I can. Also too, feel free to check out the thumbnails up there. They'll take you to different playlists on the aquaponic builds and vlogs and whatnot. Uh, also too, feel free to subscribe if you feel like 
catching up on our clips as they are posted. You'll get an email and you can come along and see what we're up to, um, either at our place or somewhere else out and about. Um, but yeah, I'll pretty much we'll leave it there. Hope everyone's enjoyed the clip. I know that you're all well and happy, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers, folks. Did that sound alright? It did. It did. It did. It sounded fine.